Hello friends, after we have seen what is mean by workability, we will now see different factors which affect the workability. Now we have seen that workability is a property of concrete which is again a mix of so many abilities of concrete. We have seen that the concrete should be movable or it should have a mobility, it should have a flowability, it should be easily transported from one place to other, it should have spreadability, it should have the compactability. After we place the concrete in a particular form, first of all we should be able to place also that we have also seen that it is called placeability. Then after the placing of this concrete we have also to settle it down or compact so that there are no air voids at all in the concrete mass and therefore compactability and then we have also seen that it should be finishable so finishability so all these different abilities of concrete which are required to work with concrete so that a proper well imagined desired shape of concrete like a column or a footing will be a reality after casting and that too it will have a long life durability sustainability further those are the properties after the final set of concrete is occurred and therefore they will be seen in another heading that is the hardened concrete properties of hardened concrete workability is a property of concrete in a fresh state means the cement fine aggregates coarse aggregates water admixtures all these things secondary cementitious materials of course they are added mixed together and we have a plastic flowable weight mix we have to do the operations on it so many operations so many actions on it that we have to mix it therefore mixability mixing proper mixing thorough mixing of all these particles of coarse aggregates fine aggregates and cement so that it will be a graded mass that means the gaps between the larger particles of coarse aggregate will be occupied by some smaller aggregates first of all then the gaps between these smaller aggregates will be occupied by sand particles and then the gaps between sand particles will be occupied by cement particles cement acts as a binder along with the water that means the mortar cement and water will be a paste gel that will bind all these substances together and a homogeneous mass is expected to be a resultant and then we have to take it transport this mass of concrete to the particular defined shape that form work of it and hence we have to place it in that form before actual concreting or casting the beam or slab or column the internal surface of those formworks are always applied with lubrication oils so that the removal of the form is easy so this uh, mixing or mixability then movability then placeability all these are the workable now when while we are going to discuss again what we have seen in the workability and uh, uh, definition of workability again it is to be referred why because here itself are the factors which are affecting the workability for example if the aggregates are only of one size that means single sized aggregates and if they are not having any grading
both for fine as well as coarse aggregates. If the aggregates which are selected are having only one size, then you will find that that mix will not be that workable. Because the internal particles friction will be there. If the same size of particle is there, there will be uh, no gap filling and hence there will be a movement or there will be always a friction on one other particle and therefore this is not going to favor the workability property. Similarly, the fine aggregates. Many people do not give importance to grading of fine aggregates but the grading is more important in case of fine aggregates. The type of cement that is also yet another factor which we will be noticing when we see the workability. We have seen the methods of determination of workability. In case of slump taste, in case of compaction factor taste, in case of the VB consistometer or the flow table, the concrete is required to have a particular stage or state. For example, in case of slump, we may have very less workability if it is there in the concrete, we may not have any slump recorded. Means even after the lifting up of that frustrum of the cone, the concrete will be just like the cone itself. It will not fall down and therefore the slum recorded may be zero or very small slump. And this is not going to give you the value of workability. So workability higher than this slump test is good. If we have lower workability, that slump will not be helpful and therefore we go for the compacting factor test. So the effects of the ingredients, cement, aggregates, then the water quality, all these are having some effect on the workability. Even when we use admixtures, admixtures which are plasticizers or super plasticizers they are mixed in suppose the concrete if they are mixed then naturally the workability will be going increasing now workability should be not too high or not too low people should be at comfort when they are working the laborers should be at comfort when they are working with the concrete in all those operations. Generally on the sites the laborers have a tendency to add more water. Just to get more workability. To certain extent it is also true that whenever we apply more water the concrete becomes flowable more flowing and therefore we can have more workability but this is the last resource this should be the last alternative that one should go for it is not always suggestible that the water content should be increased factors affecting workability actually one of those important factors is water water content and therefore whatever in the mix design water cement or water binder ratio nowadays because entire cement is not only used in mixed designs but there are certain replacing secondary cementitious materials to cement like uh, fly ash or silica fume or ggbs they are also used and therefore now a proper term is water binder ratio than water cement ratio. Of course, if it is the only cement in the concrete making used as a binder, then it is water cement ratio. 
So if the water cement ratio is a designed one, if it is say 0 0.34, 0 0.36 like that, and if the laborers are finding with this value or that water content not easy to work with, they generally add water. When you change the water cement ratio, entire properties of concrete which will be in hardened state will be affected. The very first and foremost property that gets badly affected is the strength. As you go on increasing water in the concrete, you lose the strength of concrete. For workability, more water is desirable. But for strength, more water is always not good. So, the grading of the aggregates, filling up of the larger spaces in aggregates with smaller particle sizes or even in the smaller particles there are small spaces to be filled in by sand and in order like that cement particles. This is the grading. And for that, we should have a well graded aggregates. This is one of the factors. Again, when we see that the aggregate itself, where has it been taken from? The source, the parent rock. If it is having a property to absorb more water, if the rock is of such a nature that it is absorbing more water, then also it is not good for the workability. Because already the water is taking, uh, is uh, being taken by that uh, aggregates and therefore the available lubrication in form of the cement and water will be lesser. This is one of the reasons. Absorbing characteristic of aggregates that should be not allowed. Second, the particle size. The aggregate should be of a particular size, coarse aggregates. For example, in case of normal concreting, tell mm to 40 mm this much may be the range sometimes people also use 10 mm as the size of particles up to 38 mm or 40 mm is allowed in case of the slum test also we have seen that up to 38 mm we can uh, test the workability of the concrete which is made up of maximum size of aggregate of 38 to 40 mm generally we speak of msa in a concrete mix, what is the maximum size of aggregates? So there should be a grading of aggregates, two, three or four different sizes and a fair amount of or quantity of those aggregates in suppose 100 kilogram, 30, 40 and again 30. That may be a distribution of 18, 20, Eight or like that or 30 I'm just taking an example randomly we should have uh, sizes of particles that means all there should be next is about the shape this also affects the workability shape of the particles or shape of the aggregates that also affects the workability how say when they are smooth when they are rounded, when they are rounded and when they are angular, when they are chippy or flaky we can say, just like a plate, whenever they are flaky, like very thin and a plate type, the surface area will be more and hence water from that mixing water will be required to make the surface of the aggregates weight and hence more amount of water will be required there itself leaving thereby a lesser amount of cement water gel or mix of cement and water which is the main lubricant which is main responsible factor for the 
workability. And hence, these flaky types of aggregates are not at all preferred. They should be avoided. The best is rounded. In case of angular also, there will be tremendous amount of friction, particle to particle. And hence, there will not be good workability. Then, texture of the aggregates. There should not be any rough surfaces. If they are there, again, friction will be more. There should be also no chemical present on the surface of those aggregates. Otherwise, that affects the workability. So, all in all, aggregates play a very important role. Their grading, their shape, means all the properties of aggregates which we have seen. In case of sand, again, the sand should not have any deleterious material. Dust particles should not be there. Too much fine sand is also not useful for workability. If it is too fine a sand, like the sea sand, the sand which is there on the sea beaches, why it is not used? We have abundant seashore as our country has all uh, say from the western side eastern side we have got so much of a seashore and therefore sand which is there from sea is easily available but we cannot use because the particle size is so smaller that it will not be good for the workability hence the sand which is river sand and the gravel from which we get the coarse aggregates this is supposed to be the best and therefore people are nowadays having a threat in the mind that river sand is going to be very costly maybe that it is also going to be scarcely available and therefore people are now resolving to crush the sand now again Crushed sand uses uh, somewhat coarser particles than the natural river sand. And hence, workability is again a problem with the help of crushed sand. The aggregates, the sand, they play a very important role in workability. Also, in the case of placing of the concrete to the form there is a some time so time of placing that is also affecting the workability for example we have ready mix plant ready mix concrete plant at one place away from that some 10 to 15 kilometers the concrete is to be transported that means there will be some at least 30 minutes 40 minutes one hour, one and a half hours will be required to reach there. When the RMC has just delivered the concrete, there may be certain test of slump. After this traveling, the distance and there suppose again, we are carrying out the slump test of concrete, same concrete, then there will be difference. And there will be loss of slump. <laughs> Means there will be loss of workability. This happens because of even if we are trying to continuously moving the concrete in case of the transit mixer, there will be some slump lost. Moisture from the concrete may get evaporated and therefore loss in the slump is because of time lapse. And what will be the effect on that workability? Definitely workability will be reduced. So, to have a very good workable mix, we should have shape, size, texture of aggregates, the proper type of cement, uh, as early as possible the placing should be taken up and we should also have the concrete which is not placed from a larger distance. Otherwise also there will be some problems with the homogeneity of mix because it will be then uh, getting spread and we will have the another term 
that is segregation so which are the factors affecting workability discuss them in detail if such type of question is there in a theoretical examination maybe in the public service commission exams or university exams you should be able to list it down for second third fourth all those points and one paragraph of at least five four lines it should be written so this is about the factors affecting workability of concrete so we have seen the factors affecting workability uh, one more factor is there which is of course the environment now this experience is itself a learning if you are a site in charge and if you are working on the site for one project only which may take four or five years for completion like a huge bridge then the mix design is the same for example all the bridge pyres the deck slab all they are suppose m30 m40 like that design is there of the same grade of concrete then what we can expect from the site engineer in charge is that always trying to make such an attempt that grade is maintained now grade is maintained but what about workability sometimes different workabilities grade can be seen same workability grade may disturb so how to make a combination of all these it's really a very tough challenging task and experience can only give you the tricks or the common sense holds the key now in case of summer season the water cement ratio or the water binder ratio the designed one may not sometimes help you very hot conditions are there you have to have certain additional water reverse way in a rainy season or in the winter season humid season you may have slightly lesser than that water cement ratio content water content you can have is the effect of environmental conditions is there on concrete or the workability of concrete this is very very simple thing now two more things which we are expected to study under the workability they are one is segregation and other is bleeding now segregation means it is separation of the constituents or ingredients of the concrete why this takes place that means aggregates the sand the cement and uh, water paste they are not getting mixed with each other segregation separation of all these and homogeneous mix is not is uh, uh, possible homogeneous mix is not being possible that we call as a segregation what is bleeding in case of bleeding cement and water this gel formation or we call that as a cement slurry that cement cement slurry is always coming out of the surface or the concrete uh, finished surface you will be seeing that it is just like a cream and therefore cement slurry if it is all coming out then in the lower portion of the concreting you definitely have some honeycombing that is one more term honeycombing after the forms are removed you might have seen also that column is form work now removed of that and column is showing you the visible appearance of the aggregates coarse aggregates are directly seen means if the surface should look like a plain surface you will have some aggregates exposed here or here and you'll see that that is not a proper finish means cement slurry has gone down from that particular portion the mass is also going to be weak and 
the cement which is the most important part of concrete that has been lost just like in our human body the importance of blood is there and therefore whenever blood is going out we say it is bleeding similarly in case of concrete cement is the most important and most costly material if it is coming out without adding to the strength with water if it is coming on the surface and going out we say that it is bleeding now why these things are there many times when concreting is done from a greater height if the concreting is done in the forms if this is the form and concrete is being poured or is literally thrown so during the fall of concrete the homogeneity is lost and therefore we should reduce the height we should be throwing the concrete or we should be placing the concrete from lesser heights so this is one thing after some time we have to compact and the compaction may be carried out either with the help of rodding if the concrete section is small in case of bigger sections of concrete we may have vibration or vibrators is used that is the external vibrators are used in the slab casting in case of beams also we can have the mold vibrators needle vibrators in case of slabs again means different types of vibrators are used plate vibrators they are used for roads so if the concrete roads are taken up the vibrators in form of a plate and the total plate is vibrated so that concrete mass is settled down too much vibrations time if the time of vibration is more that can also give rise to segregation therefore fall of concrete or pour of concrete the distance through which it is being poured should be not too large the vibrating time should not be more than the time which is responsible for segregating it or bleeding so these are the precautions one can have in case of the segregation and bleeding otherwise if these are there in the case of hardening of concrete in the hardened state what will happen to this concrete it will have shrinkage and there will be a weakness or less amount of strength strength will be lost so like that there will be effects of these two things segregation and bleeding again they can be said indirectly to be related to workability so this is about the segregation and bleeding now we will discuss the estimation of errors so estimation of errors generally the human element is involved now who is doing that experiment of slump test or the compaction factor test vb test flow test the experienced persons they can do even the procedure somewhat erroneously but they have a judgment and they can report the values the right one the people who are newer to the procedural setup or using all those experiments instruments equipments for early stage of their life they may report wrong values now in case of the observations which we can see or we can have a judgment of that whatever is the result given is not a proper one there are certain errors in that now the errors which can be estimated by applying certain corrections just like a positive error will be applied a negative correction 
or negative error will be applied a positive correction now how much is the tolerance how much is the minimum maximum value that we can apply as a correction in case of slump plus or minus 5 mm can be there error can be plus or minus 5 mm means when we lift that frustum of the cord the concrete will fall down the original height and the concrete which has fallen the difference of that we have to report as slump at the most we can have minus or plus 5 mm as the error in that in case of compaction factor in case of compaction factor which we have say 0.95 0 0.92 0 0.9 0 0.85 like the values of the compaction factor are there so in case of the compaction factor the estimation of errors the limiting value will be applicable by an error positive or negative by just 0.01 we may have the CF values as 0 0.95, 0 0.92, 0 0.9 and suppose we feel that there is certain erroneous result we have got. So we can apply a correction plus or minus 0 0.01. Then the third test which we have applied or we have seen in the determination of workability that is VB, VB consistometer and we can have the time vb time corrected by plus or minus 0 0.5 seconds so whenever there are the results obtained not likely to have exactness we have a doubt in the results then we can apply the corrections like this so this is the estimation of errors and a margin of error may be on positive side or negative side that has been 5 mm for slump, 0 0.01 for compaction factor and 0.5 seconds for the VB time. Now we have this table which is a standard table. What we have seen just now the estimation of errors, statistics can be applied for number of results means the mixed design just like once twice thrice we can have trial mixes then we can go for a final mixed design and that mixed design is to be followed many times that means concreting is practically every day and therefore every day new concrete mixes will be generated and therefore what was the yesterday's mix exactly matching with today's mix is not always possible and therefore there will be certain deviations so what are those deviations they can be applied with these statistical values maybe the statistical applications or calculations are applied for so many results and then again there is some restriction on this estimates of errors and their limits so we have the range of values as seen in this table for a slump if it is 0 to 100 mm range of values we have got from the table of results sometimes we may we have 80 mm as the slump 90 mm as the slump 85 mm as the slump so there can be a standard deviation of 11 like this compaction factor and the vb time so standard deviation plays an important role in the estimation of errors and therefore we have to strictly apply a control on the quality generally in all construction companies there is a department of quality control and quality assurance qcqa is the name given to that department the engineer or the head of that department has to keenly observe everyday concreting mix preparation bulking of sand bulking of aggregates quality of cement different tests of cement setting 
then uh, deleterious materials in the aggregate texture surface of the aggregate size of the aggregate grading of the aggregate many many all these values are required to be on a paper he has to go for the experimentation he has to take the results then accept or reject at times the materials and also apply the corrections with the help of the statistical control so there is a very important activity of quality control and quality assurance on the sites particularly when the works are owned by governmental agencies huge uh, suppose private owners they give to some contracting companies then they also employ their own quality control person there may be some cross checking or there may be certain punishments also if the concreting is not done as per the tender contract agreements so it is very important and these are the tools how which we can execute the control on the quality of concrete thank you